Jim. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited to talk. Uh, Russell Dream with all of you. Saturday is going to be a great, great, great day. This pay-per-view is going to become a great tradition. I'm very excited about the event. I'm really excited about the card we've announced and a lot of things happening in AEW. This is really, I believe, the most exciting time in AEW's history right now coming off this monumental TV deal. This is really the objective we've been working towards since the beginning of AEW. And now that we've achieved this, we can move forward into what I think is going to be the next phase of uh, growing this great company in this amazing sport. And with that, Jim, I, I'm really excited to start taking questions. I imagine there'll be some questions about Russell Dream and maybe some questions about the media deal as well, which you know makes sense given uh, the magnitude of the agreement we've just signed with TBS and TNT and what this means, not only to keep wrestling on the Superstation TBS every Wednesday and TNT every Saturday, but also to bring wrestling to Max and to simulcast wrestling and for AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite to be the first truly simulcast pro wrestling show across a major cable network and a major streaming platform on TBS and Max coming January 1st. Uh, I think that's really exciting. And first and foremost, really excited about this Saturday. There's so much to look forward to on this card. A lot of different matches. Uh, some of our original AEW stars and many of the great stars that have joined us over this five-year journey. I look forward to taking your calls. We've been doing this together for years, and it's become a great tradition, and I really look forward to this. So, Jim, with that, we can start taking questions. All right, here we go. Jason Powell from ProWrestling.net will lead us off, and then Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful will follow. Jason? Will you give any consideration to doing a roster split? Uh, Jason, I think we missed the beginning of your question. I got I got the end of it. You mind asking from the beginning? Sorry, man. Yeah, yeah no problem. Sure. It, the the muting thing sometimes it kind of cuts you off. You think you're on and you're not. Sure. But I said, well, you know, with, the, with yeah. the television deal being finalized, you have the two shows, and you have a lot of wrestlers and a lot of title belts. So, would you consider doing a roster split? It's not a bad thought. It's a it's an interesting thought. Uh, I definitely have considered many iterations of roster management and still working on uh, some really interesting things in terms of uh, the future of AEW media and the future of the roster. Uh, I, it's early to speculate on that, frankly, going into the new deal and, and what's to come, but it's a very interesting thought. And I, I to be honest, I have reflected on it and thought about it. Thank you, Jason. But I also, you know, I can't, I'm just to, sorry, Joe, just to say, I, I can't give any substantive answer. Just, it's a good thought. I, uh, I you know, one way or another, I, I, I have considered it, but, I, but uh, that's all I could say. But I think it's an interesting idea. But right now, um, I think definitely have some, some very interesting things happening across the shows, Jason. But uh, it is a, an interesting thought you brought up and something I've, you know, certainly in the future would and could consider. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Sorry, Jim. No, that's uh, no worries at all. Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful is next, followed by Kevin Kellum from Sports Key to Wrestling. Sean? There had been uh, a lot of questions regarding WBD possibly having equity in AEW. It wasn't featured in the press release or the variety story, but Sports Business Journal had mentioned it. When I spoke to people from WBD and AEW, they had indicated that they didn't provide that information for Sports Business Journal's story. And a uh, court revealing uh, indicated that at, if they do own a piece of AEW, it wouldn't be at least 10%. Are you able to provide any clarity on if uh, WBD does have any equity in AEW? Well, uh, it's a fair question. You know, I would not get into uh, our ownership structure beyond saying I have 100% of the voting stock in this company and have since the beginning and, uh, and you know, hold uh, the vast majority of shares. And, uh, you know, I think that's fair to say. Uh, and uh, as the sole voting owner 
and the vast majority shareholder of the company. I think that, you know, speaks volumes and I'm the controlling owner with 100% voting control of the business. Thank you, Sean. Kevin Kellum from Sports Key to Wrestling is next. Rick Uccino from Sports Illustrated will follow Kevin. Kevin, you're up. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Sorry for the delay there, Tony. Uh, a question about the AEW World Championship match, a big one with a lot more than just a championship involved. Brian Danielson. Yep. Now, obviously, he has stated that he is entering kind of the ending phase of his full-time career in pro wrestling. Can you speak to his uh, importance in this stage of his career and what it's like to work with him and what could be really the you know, you refer to it as the final countdown. It's a great marketing term and it fits with the song. But what is Brian Danielson's status right now with AEW as the world champion, but also as someone who's kind of winding down his in-ring career? And what could you state to what his role could be after being an in-ring performer? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It's been one of the real highlights of 2024 this year and also of my entire life working with Brian Danielson and watching Brian Danielson become the AEW world champion at Wembley stadium at AEW all in with his family there. It was an amazing moment and one of the great nights of my life. And I knew Brian Danielson could be a great world champion for AEW. And now he's been a great champion. He's been fighting on Wednesday night dynamite last night, even Tuesday night dynamite uh, this year. Brian's been so instrumental across our shows, dynamite collision, on the big pay-per-view shows. He's had some of the biggest and best matches and rivalries in AEW. And I think uh, the personal uh, story and rivalry that's developed recently between Brian and John Moxley is something that really encompasses all of AEW. John has been with us since our very first show and John was instrumental in bringing Brian to AEW. And now John wants to, uh, AEW control for himself and is uh, really trying to push Brian out to the sidelines as Brian is on top of the sport. And it's amazing to me that Brian Danielson, after all the great wrestling, after all the great moments and all the great memories, so many great matches, so many incredible rivalries, that Brian Danielson right now I think is at the height of his powers and he's just so phenomenal. Not only as a, a wrestler, not only as a person backstage, uh, as a human being, the connection Brian has with the crowd, with everybody backstage, everyone in AEW, the, the wrestlers, the staff and the fans. I really believe that we're looking at somebody who's, so, so special as a human being that it shines through the screen and it has for so many years. And I just am so captivated uh, by Brian's matches. And I know the entire locker room is, and it is absolutely a, a monitor sellout anytime Brian goes out there and wrestles. And I'm so excited for Wrestle Dream. You know, this show was inspired by the passing of the late great Antonio Inoki and Brian Danielson is one of pro wrestling's greatest students. And he's a historian of pro wrestling, which is one of the reasons why we're such good friends because we're both historians of the sport. And he's also somebody that inspires people. He inspires the locker room. He inspires the fans and inspires the staff. And it's why he's such a great leader within this company. And I think it's very fitting that he's the AEW world champion. I certainly don't ever want to see Brian's full-time career end. I want Brian to stay with us forever. And, and I want this run to last as long as possible. 
And I know a lot of other people feel that way. And that's why I think there's going to be so many people rooting for Brian Danielson in his home state is this conquering hero returns to Washington as the AEW world champion. And I'm so excited for wrestle dream and, and Brian Danielson versus John Moxley for the world championship is something I just cannot wait to watch. Thank you for asking. And I'm really just so excited for Saturday and I appreciate you asking about it. Thanks. Thank you, Kevin. Rick Cuccino from Sports Illustrated will be next, followed by Dominic D'Angelo from One True Sport. Rick? Hey, Tony, you got me? Hey. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate the time as always. Uh, a lot of fans excited to see Daniel Garcia return uh, last night on Dynamite um, and to hear the announcement that that he's going to be sticking around in AEW. I was wondering if you could uh, kind of shed some light on the negotiation process there with Danny. Was there ever any uh, concern you might be losing out on his services? And what are you hoping to see out of him now that he enters this next phase of his career? I really like Daniel Garcia, and I completely understand uh, why he wanted to take some time before making a really important decision uh, in his life and career. It's a life-changing decision, and I understand why somebody would want to reflect on these things, especially uh, with something like a major contract year looming. And I think it's a great beacon to our wrestlers, our staff, and our fans when they see one of the great young wrestlers in the sport, somebody that we have really spent time developing and where a lot of our top stars, people like Brian Danielson and FTR, believe in Daniel Garcia and want to mentor him and work with him. And it was so great, I think, for the morale of the company to have one of our, I believe, homegrown stars. And Daniel Garcia was a top, top independent wrestler when he came to AEW and, and we're very familiar with his work when he came in. And that's why I wanted to put him in a spot as soon as he got here when he first arrived at Daly's Place just over three years ago and work Daniel Garcia in and use him as a TV wrestler because I knew he was very, very talented as a kid. And just to see the development over the last three-plus years in Danny, uh, we've all gotten to watch it together as fans. You know, that's one of the great things about sports. When you bring in young stars, you get to watch them develop throughout their careers. And when Danny came in, uh, he, he immediately was in there in big positions on our TV shows, wrestling top stars. And I think that showed the confidence that I had in him and AEW had in Danny from the very beginning. And he's continued to grow and develop and really built the connection with the fans. And you saw that last night and throughout this year, the way the fans have, have continued growing and, and uh, caring and, and, believing in Danny more and more and more year after year. I think coming out of the Continental Classic, he was one of the real rising stars. He he wasn't the winner of the tournament, but he also earned a lot of respect and continued getting better and better throughout the tournament. And I think he opened some eyes internationally too to wrestlers around the world saying, wow, Daniel Garcia uh, is just getting better and better. And Certainly somebody like that, that works hard and loves AEW and wants to be here and is a positive, positive person in the locker room and just spreads joy in the company and to the fans. That's exactly the kind of person that you want to keep in AEW. So I was so thrilled to be able to extend Danny's contract and have Danny stay in AEW for years to come. It's great news for the AEW wrestlers, the staff, for Danny himself personally and his family and for the fans. So I think it's great. And that was one of the things I was very, very excited about this week and, and going into the future is getting Danny's contract settled. Thank you, Rick. Dominic D'Angelo from One True Sport is next to be followed by Samantha Shipman from the Daily DDT. Dominic. Tony, can you hear me okay? Yeah, man. Here you great. Hey, cool. Good to be here again. I uh, wanted to commend yeah. you quick for your Hurricane Helen relief efforts. Uh, I know that probably the word didn't want to get out about that, but Adam Copeland said something about it, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, 
excited for the weekend here when it comes to everything. Wanted to get your perspective on uh, two kind of returning talents that have shown up on television, or several of them. Uh, Jake Roberts, uh, Lance Archer, they're back kind of in the mix. And then we have Roosh getting introduced again and stuff. Uh, kind of want to get your thoughts on with this new TV deal moving forward. Uh, do you, are you going to kind of make more of a concerted effort to kind of keep uh, talent like that, like long-term talent, like a Jake Roberts or a, a Lance Archer or a Roosh, like more so on television on a rel- on, on a relatively uh, regular occasion, I guess, so to speak? Is that more of a concerted effort moving forward with the new TV deal? Well, it's always been something I, I care about is using our great wrestlers on our shows. I think one of the things that, this affords us uh, the future and the security is uh, for the long-term planning, knowing the future, knowing that, okay, dynamite is secure for many years to come on Wednesdays on TBS collision is secure for many years to come on Saturdays on TNT. And obviously the financial health of the company is secure. And these are wrestlers we committed to. Now I really like Roosh and Lance. The, The thinking behind this is I think they both have so much that they bring to the table. They're just both tremendous in their own ways. And I really want to utilize them on the shows. And when I was younger, uh, there were sometimes trades in wrestling with the managers. It's not something I've seen in many, 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 many years. And and at least that I can recall and not saying it hasn't happened anywhere. Just, I haven't seen it or watched it since I was a kid and I work in pro sports. There's trades and transfers all the time. And a lot of times, Personally, I've seen it firsthand where a trade can really change the scenery and change the outlook and some new coaching can be great for a player and change a player's career. And I've just seen it firsthand so many times. And that's what I wanted to do in AEW. I think these are both great players and I think they've got great coaches. I think Don Callis and Jake the Snake are great managers. I think Lance Archer and Roosh are tremendous wrestlers. And, you know, if I hadn't done the trade, I think – they could have done good things in the situations they were in, but I think they'll all be better in this situation. I think Jake is in a great position. He's got a great history. He's been a great champion in Mexico, Jake the Snake. He knows Lucha Libre, and he's an expert in American wrestling. Obviously, Don Callis is an expert in international wrestling, too. He's got a lot of things going on, and I think he can provide uh, a different perspective for Lance Archer, put Lance Lance Archer in an environment where Lance can compete around against with alongside some of the great wrestlers he was with in new Japan pro wrestling, where he really helped build his reputation before he came into AEW as a a wrecking force. And obviously our, our fans really like Lance in AEW. He's been involved in some of the great matches and great moments in the history of the company. And I thought maybe a new coach uh, could be something that would help him too. And I think Jake will be great for Roosh and his team And uh, so I thought the idea of Don and Jake doing a trade and Don taking Lance's contract and Jake the Snake taking Roosh's contract and what comes with it, obviously Roosh has his brother along his side and now he's trying to get Mortos aligned with LFI. And it seems like he may have succeeded despite Roderick Strong wanting to remain good friends with Frank Beast Mortos. And I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting things happening in AEW right now, and I, I, I'm really very excited for the future. You, you know, you asked about the TV deal, and I think the TV deal does give us security and and give us a platform for long-term planning. And you know, this was just something also I wanted to do. I just thought it was good timing to try uh, this change, and I think the the change of coaches could be great for both wrestlers and both coaches. Thanks for asking. Thank you, Dominic. Samantha Shipman from the Daily DDT is next, followed by Andrew Badala from Final Bell Media. Samantha. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was just it was quiet on my end. Uh, so I have a question kind of going back to the deal. Uh, there had been some rumors that maybe ROH would come to TV or they would be shocked around or be involved somehow. And obviously that we, at this point, we haven't heard anything about that. So is that still the plan? Like, are you still shopping ROH for TV? Is the plan just to keep it on Honor Club? 
Um, what are you, what are your thoughts on the future of ROH and Honor Club? Well, I am a big ROH fan. I'm really excited for the show. Normally, when we do these after TV, the press the press conference is on Thursday, but this is a little unusual doing it on a Wednesday. I'm not used to having free time on a Wednesday. This happens very, very, very seldomly. Uh, so uh, it definitely feels like a Thursday to me, and it feels like ROH should be on tonight. There's a lot of great stuff on tomorrow's ROH. I'm really excited for tomorrow's episode. There will be a tr- ton of great things to look forward to, including Red Velvet versus Diamante for the Ring of Honor Women's World TV title. I think Red Velvet versus Diamante tomorrow is going to be an excellent, excellent match. I'm really looking forward to that. Two of my favorites. They've both been with us for years, and I think they're both at the top of their game right now. This is going to be a, an excellent match, and there's a lot of good things to look forward to on tomorrow's ROH show. And uh, one thing I'm planning, you know, what got me into ROH in the first place when I was in college, I I had bought one ROH DVD, and it was good, but it was a lot different than what the company became, and it was the era of Honor Begins. It was the first show. And I wanted to see, frankly, uh, Brian Danielson and Eddie Guerrero were both on the show in different matches, and I wanted to see them. And that was the era of Honor Begins. And then uh, the company grew and changed, and I I hadn't followed it that closely until I was uh, in college. And in 2006, they were getting rave reviews for the shows, and I was really interested. So I bought two DVDs, and I sent uh, ROH at the time a check in college for two DVDs, which they mailed to me. And I I was thrilled. Obviously it's a lot more efficient delivery system now with streaming video than having to wait for DVDs and tapes in the mail, which so many of us can relate to. Uh, But I uh, bought these two DVDs and one was Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kobashi. That's why I put Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kobashi on the show last week. Uh, I'm, I love wrestling, and one of the great things about wrestling is that because it's a 52-week-a-year business, and we all, for the most part, tend to keep up on it year-round, and, you know, throughout seasons changing and and lives and responsibilities, wrestling is always there for us, and hmm, I, uh, (laughs) it's... It's a constantly evolving love, and I think that all of us tend to find ourselves falling back in love with wrestling several times a year, (laughs) and uh, I'm in one of those phases. I'm loving wrestling right now, and I always love wrestling. You know, and but I but sometimes I fall deeper in love with it, and um, and I really wanted to show the fans Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kobashi for anyone who hadn't seen it last week. And I thought Yannick Caprice did a great job with the commentary. And this week going into Wrestle Dream, given the stakes of the match and given everything Brian Danielson's brought to the table and this great run he's having as AEW world champion, since it was ROH where I first became familiar with Brian, this week I wanted to show Brian one of the two matches that really made me a huge ROH fan. So I mentioned one that I showed last week, which was Samoa Joe versus Kenta Kobashi. That was one of the two DVDs I bought when I was in college that really got me into ROH. The other one, I think it was more recent at the time, if I recall, was Brian Danielson versus Kenta. I think that's Glory by Honor 5. But but, but yes, uh, Brian Danielson versus Kenta. It was 2006. I bought this DVD and it blew my mind. So I really want the fans to see this. It's it's a great match and a great memory for me. And and uh, in addition to all the great matches on ROH this week and the great champions we have in the company right now in ROH, I thought it would be cool to show the AEW world champion Brian Danielson in a match. I, if I recall, I think it's about 18 years ago, this match. And, uh, of course, Brian Danielson still doing it at the very highest level today. Kent is still a great international star. I thought this would be a great, great match to show the fans this week as we get ready for Wrestle Dream. It's one of my favorite matches. So there's a great history in ROH, and it's a great company. Uh, and uh, it's not part of this TV deal as it stands, but we, it gives us a lot of opportunities in the marketplace. And uh, this was the most 
important step. This was the biggest step, I think, in AEW's history to secure these media rights and uh, to lock in AEW Wednesdays on TBS for years to come and Saturdays on TNT for years to come, but also to bring Max streaming simulcast into this equation. It's huge. ROH is a major promotional priority for me going forward. There are other huge media rights still to be determined. Our international AEW rights still out there for bid in so many countries. Our domestic and international ROH plan and so many other things out there. So I I know there's been a lot of speculation. I wasn't sure where some of that came from, frankly, because I think some of those reports before the deal actually was done, some of those reports were not accurate, but it was interesting because there were other reports that were very, very accurate about a lot of the things that were going on, you know, in terms of the positive momentum. And honestly, that was not me sourcing those things, but it did give me some good security to hear that another party around the transaction was feeling good about it, not just me. So that, you know, that gave me uh, uh, some good security as I was negotiating too, frankly. But uh, I do think that going forward, there'll be great opportunities for ROH and I love the company very much. I love what we do. Um, I, in fact, I love what, you know, obviously I love all of our TV tapings, but it's a lot of fun for ROH in particular when we can tape it as a standalone and I get to spend time not only with all the great veteran stars of ROH, but with the young wrestlers, which is what so much of it's about, uh, and developing great stars where we have the great veterans and traditions of ROH, but also trying to build stars from the future. And uh, I think it's been something I, I really enjoy as a wrestling fan. And, uh, you know, that's where as a wrestling fan and as a promoter, I thought it would be fun this week going into Wrestle Dream in AEW to show Brian Danielson versus Kenta on ROH, along with a loaded episode. So thanks for asking about it. Thank you, Samantha. Andrew Bedala from Final Bell Media is next, to be followed by Bill Pritchard from Wrestle Dream. Andrew. Tony, can you hear me? Yeah, hey, Drew. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Uh, congratulations well, on the thanks. media rights deal. Looking forward to Wrestle Dream on Saturday and the stacked cards. So good luck with the pay per view. With pay per views being a major aspect of the AEW business model currently, can you provide more information about the details of the pay per view model going into 2025 with Max here in North America? With the reported discount and model will be for Max subscribers. Thanks. Uh, it's a great question. I think some of these. Uh, aspects are yet to be rolled out and uh, I would like to stay in lockstep in partnership with Warner Brothers Discovery about rolling out the information but I think what we put out there it is exciting that you know when Max gets the pay-per-view capabilities which obviously it's not set up for right now will be a a big part of the pay-per-view service but you know at the start of the year Max will start carrying Dynamite and Collision on TBS and TNT simulcast as they're on. So I think having live viewers on Max for wrestling is a huge, huge, huge opportunity. And obviously the great library of shows we've built now that we've done over I think, 260 episodes of Dynamite and you know had a great year plus of Collision, all these great pay-per-views and shows throughout our library. It's a really, really uh, exciting proposition to have the streaming library uh, on such a great service as Max, where I know they'll do not only exceptional work in promoting the show, but also to have our show on a platform next to all the shows I consider, for the most part, to be all the best shows, probably nine out of ten of the best shows in television history are on that platform. So to have our show on that platform is amazing. And I, uh, I think it would make sense as we get closer to the max pay-per-view rollout to talk a little bit more about that. But I do think is, you know, when it comes time for max to start carrying the pay-per-views, yeah, it presents a, an exciting opportunity because then if you're signed up for max, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a, a good incentive financially uh, to get some discount on the pay-per-view relative to the price of max. So, uh, you know, I think that's something that still uh, will be officially, announced the details as we get closer to the rollout next year. But I do think the idea of having our pay-per-views, which are such a premium product and something I really learned in the media rights deal, as I was very confident about AEW and what we do here. 
and the future of the company, I got even more confident as I got deeper and deeper into the numbers and learned things about our fans. I mentioned on a prior pay-per-view media call that the AEW fans are, of all the sports leagues in the world, AEW has the fans that are willing to spend the most on streaming video. I also don't want to take advantage of that. I think we've we've offered a, a good cadence of pay-per-views, of great shows, and our fans continue to feel they get their money's worth on these pay-per-views time after time. And I take a lot of pride in that because I think we do the best pay-per-views in wrestling historically, and this has been, without a doubt, 2024, our very best year ever on pay-per-view. The pay-per-views since the start of the year have been phenomenal, and I would say of our top five shows of all time, three have certainly been this year, and my two favorites of all time have been this year with Revolution 24 and All In 24. I think Sting's uh, retirement and Sting retiring as World Tag Team Champions undefeated with Darby Allin in Greensboro, North Carolina, setting every business record was one of the great nights in wrestling. And, and it was just also one of the best pay-per-views I've ever seen top to bottom. Everybody tore the house down on that show in revolution. And then at all in, we went to Wembley, we had over 50,000 fans and just an amazing set. Everything came together so well, I think using Taylor Swift's stage and everything that happened uh, to complicate the load in process for us all ended up being an amazing blessing. And we ended up finding a solution that, just built such a grandiose set and to the TV viewers, so many people that really felt the show looked much better this year. And I thought that was really interesting and and a blessing for the TV audience. And then the grandiose nature of it played out perfectly on the biggest stage when you had Brian Danielson versus Swerve Strickland for the AEW world championship. And when Brian toppled the unbeatable Swerve, who had been on this phenomenal run as an AEW champion. And it set Brian, who'd already accomplished everything outside AEW and and could have walked away before he ever even set foot in AEW as arguably the best ever and one of the greatest careers ever in wrestling. And he came here and it, it's only further cemented this incredible legacy that, of Brian Danielson. And the greatest legacy of Brian Danielson will always be the connection he has with the fans. And that was on display that night, but also it was so nice to be able to see the connection with Brian Danielson and his fans and bring his family into the middle of it and create a memory for them that can last forever. And that was one of the real highlights of my life too. So I think that for the pay-per-views, we take a lot of pride in this year and I think Max took notice of that. They also, frankly, as a business, took notice of uh, the the avidity of our fans, the very, very strong fan feedback about the quality of these events, and they really wanted to be a part of it. Obviously, it's great for the TV product to have Dynamite streaming on Max and Collision streaming on Max 52 weeks a year, but then now to add in this component – and make our pay-per-view business, I think, even stronger going forward, which has been one of the real strengths of AEW, has been as a pay-per-view business. From the very beginning of the company, we've just come in and done great business uh, historically in terms of pay-per-views. And I'm really glad that Warner Brothers Discovery is going to be part of that business now in a more, in an even more meaningful way. It was, it was great doing the shows on Bleacher Report, and I think it's a great – sports site. It's a great platform and there's great people there. And I have great memories of Bleacher Report, but I have to note now this pay-per-view is not going to be on Bleacher Report and that era is now over. And everybody who ordered pay-per-views on Bleacher Report, we do need to find a new delivery system. Uh, I know there's going to be at least one person, uh, you know, just like there's going to be at least one person trying to tune into Dynamite on a Wednesday, even though we really tried very hard. Uh, to get the word out about Tuesday on all our shows and social media. Uh, Sure, there's going to be somebody out there inevitably that's going to turn on the TV and think of Dynamite's on on Wednesday. And I think there's going to be people inevitably, as we're all creatures of habit, or most of us, many of us are creatures of habit at least, uh, that a lot of people are going to try to buy this pay-per-view on Bleach Report like they have for years because we've had a really consistent fan base there. But they are 
shutting down their pay-per-view capabilities for everything. So they're not doing any pay-per-views anymore on Bleacher Report. So everybody's got to find, please, if you could disseminate this, everyone listening, uh, a new pay-per-view outlet. Because uh, until Max fires up, Warner Brothers Discovery is in a transitional phase. So there's cable, satellite, and tons of streaming options. YouTube, uh, ppv.com, Triller, Fight, and a lot of great places you can order this show. And uh, in the meantime, but but absolutely, I, I'm excited to be getting even more entrenched in the pay-per-view business with Warner Brothers Discovery. And as for the pricing in the, of those things, you know, uh, we can reveal more of that in the future. Um, it's got to be a number that makes sense relative to the subscription price. So, you know, it can't be like, you know, the entire price of the show, but I think it could be a portion that makes sense relative to what people pay for Max, where it's like a, a really good deal to be a Max subscriber if you're a regular HBO, excuse me, where uh, to be a, uh, I love HBO so much, and I love HBO and AEW, two of my favorite things. I just switched them up in that sentence. So if you're a, a big AEW fan and you are a regular AEW pay per view buyer and you're a Max subscriber, this is a great deal for you. And if you're not a Max subscriber, then it's going to make sense if you are a regular AEW pay-per-view buyer to to go on Max and buy it. And if you've never bought an AEW pay-per-view and you're a Max subscriber and you're buying it anyway, then for you it will also make sense maybe because it's like, hey, uh, I'm getting a better deal with the Max, uh, so I'm getting it at a discount. Maybe I should check this out. But uh, you know, it's got to be a number that makes sense, and I, I think we've got a good idea, frankly. So. Uh, it was really good working with the people at Warner Brothers Discovery on this deal. They were really fair and, and honest, and uh, it took many months of going back and forth because there's hundreds of pages and and uh, you know royalties and tax implications and international and all kinds of stuff that we have to look at. And uh, I think uh, they were as fair as possible with us, and, and we reached a deal that both sides were happy about, which is hard to do. And uh, that's, I think, how good the working relationship is. Usually when you reach a, a deal where both sides are happy about it, it means that they really like working together or really want to work together. And this is one of those situations with AEW and Warner Brothers Discovery. Thanks for asking. Thank you very much, Andrew. <laughs> Bill Pritchard from WrestleZone, you're next, followed by Courtney Rice from Women's Wrestling Talk. Bill. Is Courtney Rice ready to go? Hello? Yes. Can you hear hey. me? We're going to go with Courtney. Yep. Okay. Hey. Hi. Uh, first off, from hey. one football fan to another, congratulations on the Jacksonville getting their first win. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And I have a quick question in regards to the upcoming women's match at Wrestle Dream this weekend, because I feel like 2024 has been the coming out party of women's wrestling and how proud of you are for these ladies competing this weekend, but also throughout of 2024 and really showcasing on Dynamite, Collision, and also Ring of Honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. I've really been enjoying uh, the women's wrestling in AEW and ROH this year in particular, uh, and I think it's at a real high point. Absolutely. Did, did I miss it? Is, was that was that I I'm I, I'm sorry I might have missed part of the question Jim I think it said I'm really enjoying it too I, did I miss your I I that way it sounded like a very positive compliment no 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 actually it was pretty much your thoughts ahead of this upcoming women's women's match at Wrestle Dream this weekend giving everything that's been happening uh, Mariah May has been doing a really good job with her reign and we're also seeing some of the AEW originals coming in like Willow. Um, Britt Baker trying to get a shot at her, also seeing Queen Amanata yep. shine out at All Out, and just seeing all these ladies getting an opportunity in the promised land. How has this, what has been 
the vocal point moving forward because these ladies just show up even on the main roster and they show that they're here to stay. Well, I really enjoy working on it and I think it's, it's been really strong and I think it comes down to the quality of the roster. It just keeps getting better and better across AEW and ROH too. You know, uh, before I get deeper, I've AEW, I could talk and write books and books about talking about, and I could do it with ROH too, but real quick thoughts on ROH. Like I said, I think tonight, uh, Diamante versus Red Velvet, that's an excellent match. Both of them have showed out on ROH, big matches, a uh, big part of the ROH women's TV title tournament. And uh, Red Velvet is now a great world television champion. And I think this will be a great match tonight. Excuse me, I'm so used to these calls being on Thursday. It's so weird. It's weird. But not, not working on a Wednesday is very unusual to me, everybody. This is like a one-time-a-year thing. Uh, it's like uh, uh, very strange. So, uh, But, yes, ROH tomorrow uh, on Thursday. Uh, that's going to be a great match. And uh, really, really uh, enjoy working with them. And also really enjoy working with the world champion, Athena, who's one of the great pros. And I think I have a great relationship and working uh, relationship with and, and somebody that just – a great pro and one of the great champions in the sport. And in AEW, we have so much exciting stuff going on. Uh, one thing that I think really helped kickstart things at the highest level is I think you mentioned uh, we've got a great world champion in Mariah May. She had a great mentor in Timeless Tony Storm. I have loved working with those two. It's been over a year in the making since I reached out to Mariah when I first had the thoughts about all about Eve and Sunset Boulevard and all the things that I wanted to do. And I think it's been a great inspiration. And also I think it's really uh, been great for both of them, for Mariah May and uh, for a long time for Timeless Tony Storm. Although uh, it was an unhappy ending to her night at AEW All In. I know we have not seen the last of Timeless Tony Storm here in AEW and I can't wait for her to come back. Uh, she's traveling the world right now. It's a bit of a where in the world is Tony Storm situation. And I look forward to following it and uh, covering that in AEW. I think Timeless Tony Storm is a great part of the company. And I think Mariah May, her former protege now, is a great champion. I'm really looking forward to Mariah versus Willow. I thought it was a great match in the Owen Hart Foundation tournament. And because of what happened afterwards with Mariah and uh, Tony Storm and the end of that, uh, the end of that friendship and what led to the women's world championship match at AEW all in people might forget that, Hey, these are the last two Owen Hart foundation winners and they were in the finals this year and they had a great, great match in Calgary. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to this rematch. It was a little bit of a different path, uh, to wrestle dream than we had originally planned. I think Dr. Britt Baker is a huge part of the women's division and I've really enjoyed having Britt back also. Uh, and look forward to Britt coming back. Britt was really, really sick this week, and I did not, you know, I, I think that, uh, I, I think that Britt is a real professional, and I think she's a big star, and I really like working with Britt. And people can say uh, anything they want, but at the end of the day, I think Britt is a great star for AEW. She's a homegrown star and the fans connect with her. And absolutely. Uh, she's a huge part of the division and a big star for us. And I really like Britt personally. Uh, I saw her over the weekend at mega's wedding and she got very sick after that. And, uh, I know she would have been there for us cause she's a real pro. And it, we had to make a lot of changes to yesterday's show. And, to the pay-per-view. And frankly, I was in the office until four in the morning working on changes to upcoming shows. And I didn't get out of my office until four in the morning, which is not that unusual for me. Uh, but, uh, that's a little bit pushing it, especially when, you know, I was hoping to fly home after the show and everything. So, um, uh, it's been a lot of changes, but also good stuff. And, uh, there, I really think 
the women's division is in the strongest place it's ever been. And, and now, of course, we have probably the greatest free agent we ever could have pulled into the women's division, the CEO, Mercedes Monet, who's a huge free agent signing for us. And she is not only a big star, she's a great, great wrestler and a student of wrestling, somebody that really loves and studies the craft. Last night, that was a big deal for Mercedes to wrestle Emmy Sakura on television and to have that be her first double title defense. That's somebody Mercedes stu- studied as a very young wrestler as a child. And, uh, it, you know, somebody that has been an inspiration to her. And that's the kind of student of the sport she is. And she is also a really positive additive presence here in AEW. And now we've seen her aligned with Camille Brickhouse. And uh, Camille is one of the real powerhouse wrestlers, one of the real uh, – dominant, uh, most, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, one of the most interesting wrestlers in the women's division right now. And then you have, as far as what, what can Camille do and, uh, you know, untapped, uh, as we've seen Camille just so dominant in her matches. And we've seen another one of the top forces in wrestling, Chris Statlander. And it's interesting. I think we'll get more more of an answer on where Chris's mind is at. She said she's born again. She's been with managers and and stables for so long, and she's she's trying to go of her own. And we're seeing a different Chris Statlander, but I think Chris has such a positive connection with the fans. The fans want to cheer Chris. Um, And we've been seeing Stokely Hathaway focus more on tag team wrestling lately, and Chris focused more on herself. But she had that great win in the Chicago street fight. And uh, unfortunately, it took a lot out of her she was injured in in the path to the win and was not able to immediately follow up on the momentum. And now uh, getting Chris going again after uh, that great win at all out and, and seeing that there's interest to me in Chris versus Camille is a very compelling match that I think is, is very interesting and I would like to see, but there's a lot of people that also have, you know, drawn the conclusion, Hey, Chris is a former TBS champion. She was a great, great champion. Uh, Mercedes is the TBS champion. She's a double champion, in fact. And uh, that's also a very compelling match I think people would want to see. And there are so many compelling matches that we can still deliver to our fans with that great roster of women and men. And I think that's one of the great things about AEW. We're seeing a bunch of interesting stories and rivalries developing right now. But with this great TV deal, I think we'll be in a great position for years to come with this quality of roster, even with the hard hitting style of AEW where there's injuries and things can happen. I think we're just set up across the women and the men to have great rivalries, great matches, great stories and great shows for many years to come. And I think the experience of the pandemic changing shows on the day of, I have a lot of experience making changes on the day of the show. Uh, for somebody that's been a wrestling promoter for five and a half years, I've had to deal with a lot of stuff in the five and a half years. And, uh, you know, and a lot of it came in that pandemic era, which, which hardened and, and changed the way a lot of us worked and, and learned. But I think it helped, honestly. And dealing with challenging booking circumstances where it was hard for people to travel at times and where people were not able to come to the shows at times, even on short notice due to either illness or travel issues in the pandemic. And, now, this has been, if I may say, one of the worst tragedies in American history is what's happening uh, with the hurricanes. And I just am so, uh, I'm so, it, it really puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? You know, and, and it was interesting to come to work knowing that a lot of my friends and a lot of coworkers and people from AEW have not been able to travel to the shows in recent weeks, either to one show here and there due to a travel issue. Is somebody, is somebody in my, is somebody have a phone unmuted by the way? Somebody mute their phone. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, cause I, I, this is a really serious thing I'm talking about. Thank you. And, uh, it's, uh, it puts it all in perspective, doesn't it? Because, What's happening in recent weeks with these hurricanes and what's happening to families and friends, it's touching all of us. It's a small world, right? And I think a lot of us, even if you're not part of this wrestling community, a lot of us know people around Asheville or know somebody who knows people around Asheville, North Carolina, and what's happened there. 
and Asheville's been hit so hard, but so many other great communities also hit very, very hard around the Carolinas, around Florida and East Coast, and uh, all the great fans of AEW there. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about you, but I'm also thinking about everybody, whether it's uh, you know our, our wrestlers, our staff, and just, just people, just people I'm, I'll never meet, I'll never know, uh, that are being affected by this, and realizing that there's a lot of people with tough circumstances. So if I spend... 18, 19 hours in the office working on a wrestling show day in, day out. Uh, there are people with way worse problems than that. I'm very lucky to even be in that position to have to make changes to the show because people can't fly or, or that, you know, there's, there's a uh, travel issues due to the hurricane or people are sick or anything like that. Uh, it's really a blessing to be able to do this and to come to work and work in wrestling. And, uh, and I just pray for all the people that are affected by these terrible tragedies, especially these terrible hurricanes right now. And, uh, you know, that's somebody brought up earlier on the call. I think it was Dominic, uh, what Adam had said, you know, I never asked Adam to say that. And I, I, I think I'll say something about Adam that I mean, he would never asked for the credit on this, but I talked to Adam, I was backstage at collision and just like what I'm talking about, where there was, you know, people unable to travel and there's so many crazy things happening. And I was dealing with uh, a bit of a scramble to, with some of those issues. And, Adam called me last week at backstage at collision and he was with the female workers and he was working with them. He's helping them. And they were, they were digging bodies out and, and they were dealing with uh, this terrible, terrible tragedy. And, and here I am, you know, six cups of coffee and pulling my hair out because some, you know, people's flights got canceled and they, you know, and then they aren't able to travel to the show. And it's like, you know, Hey, we can be creative. We can work around this. We can make solutions that'll, that'll, that'll make everybody happy. And there'll be good matches for the fans in the arena and the fans on TV. And we can still make good stories and work around it. And it was the exact same experience we had in the pandemic. So it felt like, you know, in recent weeks, some of the changes I've been making in the office, you know, to do a great, I thought last night was a great, great show. And it, Reminded me of some of the shows in Daly's place where everybody really pulled together. We had to go to some people and say, I know you didn't think you were wrestling today or, or, we, or we had you in a completely different segment. You know, we thought you were doing an interview, but now I need you to wrestle or, or, or people's matches in the coming weeks also are affected by that because it's a bit of a domino effect in wrestling. It's a lot of changes, but in the end, isn't that uh, a blessing that we're able to work in wrestling and make these changes and uh, you know, to be at work uh, I'm just, you know, lucky to be there. So, uh, right now, you know, my heart goes out to everybody affected by this stuff. And I, I have some friends I haven't seen that haven't been able to travel to the shows recently, but, uh, what they're doing is great. And, uh, Adam and, and Dax and cash and, uh, everybody chipping in on the relief efforts and, and now is the hurricane problem and, and as the damage and, and the God forbid the loss of life and all these things start to, 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 become a reality. It's terrible. And I think what those guys are doing and, and what everybody, the FEMA workers and everybody who's uh, donating and volunteering, anything you can do, you know, that's why we're doing it on AEW, right? I think we all, and look, we all have problems of our own and I get it. And, and, you know, that's why, you know, I'm not, if anybody can spare a dollar, 50 cents or anything, uh, you know, it can help. It can make a difference. And that's why we put uh, the, the, the 800 number and the website on AEW for people to try to contribute. And, you know, it's a big week for us. It's wrestle dream. And a lot of wrestling promoters would probably be a hundred percent focused on selling their pay-per-view and just trying to sell the pay-per-view, especially with the stakes of the pay-per-view, because for like the emotional stakes are really, really high on this show. I care about this so much, what we're doing. And yet, uh, I would be remiss not to bring, the charitable aspect of this into the show and to try to get people to donate. And that's why, you know, it wasn't all about promoting AEW on TBS last night. It's also about promoting hurricane relief and whatever we can do to help people. And I think that's important for us all to keep in perspective too. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. That's all the time we have. Tony, do you have any, um, you know, final thoughts on the show and, and, and the days ahead? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. And uh, we'll get back to the show. Obviously it's a, it's a huge week for us. And I am so excited for this event. I'm so excited 
as a wrestling promoter and as a wrestling fan, there are just different things up and down the card. You know, no matter what you want to see in wrestling, I think we've got it for you on this show. And of course the show, we honor the late great Antonio Inoki. Uh, this uh, week actually is the anniversary of his passing this past week. Uh, and uh, it is, is it was actually his, his he passed I believe uh, right around the anniversary of of Dynamite, and I remember being in a hotel room when he passed a year before Wrestle Dream, so about two years ago, and thinking I would really like to do a show a year from now to commemorate him and everything he did, and uh, it's you know it's easy to forget and. It's easy to move on and and think about new things, but also uh, the people that got us here, the people that built this sport. Wrestling, there's a lot of nostalgia, but there's a lot of history in this business and this sport. And you can't talk about the history of the sport. You can't talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, and you can't talk about the foundations of AEW without Antonio Inoki. And I, I hope he would be proud of the show we put on. I think this is going to be a great, great event, and I really appreciate all of you coming here to cover Saturday's pay-per-view. I think a lot of you have been coming to our calls pretty much from the beginning, covering our events. I think I've met so many of you either at scrums or different events over the years. And I really, really appreciate it. And I know it's a job for you, too, covering wrestling, but you know, to take a moment and reflect, aren't it, I, I know it's work, but aren't we all lucky that we get to do this for work. And some of us might do other things outside of this. I'm, for me, I'm lucky that the other things I do outside of this are football, other things I love too. Um, but uh, there are a lot of hard things happening in life too. And I think uh, to have wrestling to turn to 52 weeks a year is, is a blessing for all of us. So thanks for covering this because you're a huge part of the wrestling business and we wouldn't be able to put on these shows and connect with our fans without the great coverage we get from you. And it's obviously been a really exciting time in the company. This is such a huge milestone in AEW's history. So I'm glad I got to talk uh, with you. So many of you who are instrumental in the growth of the company from year one, before we even had a TV deal for AEW, you know, it's, it's very nice to be able to talk to you about this extension, this, this new agreement with Warner brothers discovery and bringing AEW into weekly streaming on max. So I really wanted to talk to you all about that. So that was really great. But uh, first and foremost, just so great to be able to talk Wrestle Dream. I'm very excited for Saturday's event. And thank you all for covering the show. Jim, thanks for hosting these as always. I really uh, appreciate uh, your great moderator. And uh, thanks to everybody on our team uh, that helped us put this together. It's a little weird not being at Dynamite on a Wednesday, uh, but here we are. And uh, I think we... We made a fun day out of it. So thanks everyone for joining us today. We sure did. Thank you, Tony. And thank you to everybody. We're at deadline, as Tony mentioned. So before we leave, a reminder that we will soon issue a audio file from today's conference. So uh, be looking for that. And then we'll be looking for you on Saturday night at the uh, Tacoma Dome uh, for AEW Wrestle Dream. See you there and best wishes to everybody. <laughs>